I'm in a car, but we will continue our discussion. We'll see if I can sustain maybe half an hour. Um, is my voice okay? Is it clear? Yes, please. Thank you. Om Gyanti Miran Dhasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manao Bhisham Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Hakada Mahiya Dadati Swapadantikam One day Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamala Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sarajata Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Radhita Shri Vishakham Vitam E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Rapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vinda Vaneshwari Vishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpataru Vyascha Tripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita nam pavani bio vaishnavi bio namo nama. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukham Kavati Vachalam Tamam Langayate Giri Yatripa Tamaham Bhatte Shri Guru Dina Tarinam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram So today we are reading the second last chapter of the second canto. If my voice breaks or something, please let me know. Um, the last chapter number 8 was uh, further questions by Maharaj Parikshit and after uh, asking the previous questions about what is how can one attain perfection in this life what is the duty of a man who is about to die in 7 days and then later on various questions various other questions uh, about uh, the structure of the universe and other things mm -hmm. About the creation. Uh, after Sukadev Goswami answers those questions that happened till now. Then last chapter, Parikshit Maharaj asked like so many other questions because he was very eager to continually hear about the Lord, about Krishna. And the name of this chapter is Answer by Citing Lord's Version. Um, so what happened in the past is uh, um, there is a discussion between Lord Vishnu and Brahma. This is uh, at the very beginning of creation where um, Brahma performed severe austerities and he got the darshan of uh, Narayan, Vishnu. And then he asked uh, uh, four major questions from Vishnu. And those questions are exactly the questions that Maharaj Parikshit asked Sukhotev Goswami. And in this uh, chapter, the Lord is answering those questions put forward by Brahma, which are the same questions that today or at this point of time were put forward by uh, uh, Maharaj Parikshit to Sukadev Goswami. And this again continues the principle of Sukadev Goswami is repeating, although he is on a very exalted position of a personal parrot of Srimati Radharam, he is answering the questions Quoting Narayan, just like like Shri Prabhupada said, Bhagavad Gita is like a law book. Any question ask, quote Bhagavad Gita or quote Srimad Bhagavatam and answer based on Shastra and Parampara. Likewise, we see that time Bhagavad Gita was um, 
it like there are other discussion but it is centered around lord and parampara so one of the question asked is um, how does the jiva get a body what kind of body jiva gets why is G and how can jiva get out from those bodies so in the beginning um Sukadev Goswami answered this question and he says that the relationship between jiva and the body is not real and it is only due to the illusory energy of the body. Um, there is actually, he says, I mean, Sukadev Goswami says the relationship between the soul and the body does not exist, but the relationship is there based on illusory energy or um, do I have a relationship with the body um, based on false ego? Yes. But otherwise, on a true sense, um, completely different and have no connection with the material elements. Why Satchitananda having relationship with Krishna is one of the five, you know, one of the five verses. It's like a dreamer seeing his dream body. And uh, Sukadeva Goswami says, like sometimes we get a dream and we see I'm a bird, but then we don't have any relationship with the bird. It's just a dream. Likewise, but we identify no, I'm a bird. Likewise, we identify, hey, this is my body and this is who I am. So it's like a dreamer identification in a dream. That's how is the relationship of a jiva with the body. Um, and based on uh, the desire uh, of the subtle body, the jiva takes many, many forms. Based on good and karma, the more and the desires, the desire and karma, ichha and karma. Based on that, we get the jiva takes many many bodies. And uh, uh, what does he do in the body? He enjoys the most. And the jiva thinks in terms of I am not. So he is the jiva is enjoying the most, and he. Things in terms of I and I. What does it mean? Oh, I got a cup of coffee and I drank it and I love this coffee. So, or um, I'm enjoying Satwagun because I mean, it's Tamogun actually because coffee is caffeine is Tamogun and milk is Satwagun. So, I'm just enjoying the most. Or uh, 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 pain. Oh, I became very famous. Oh, I'm very happy that I'm so famous. Now, I'm enjoying the Rajogun. Or um, I I love sleeping, or I love alcohol. I'm enjoying tamogun, or I love nature. I'm enjoying uh, uh, satvagun. So the living entity is actually enjoying the most, but he thinks in terms of I and I. He thinks he is enjoying, but it's actually the influence of the most on the living entity. But the living entity has no real connection with the body. Then. And this was one question. Why, when the soul is spiritual and the body is material, how they get together? Then the answer is, it's a lot of illusory energy. Um, how they change form based on itcha, based on desire. Um, and the next question was, uh, how they come out? Then Sukadeva Goswami says, when the living entity gets in touch with the Lord, who is beyond time and maya, through bhakti, he becomes free from the misconception of I and mind. And this is the escape, escape route. And when they come in touch with Krishna, who is transcendental personality, and establishes the relationship with Krishna through the process of bhakti, then the identification with the I and the mind, which is the body, uh, is a loose end. And once that relationship is firmly established, that's how the living entity can escape. And now, this was the first few questions of Bharat Pradipshit. Very simple answer. Um, practice devotional service and that's how we can escape the bodily conception of life. Now, next is uh, um, um, the background of uh, Brahma who um, appeared in a lotus flower. Narayan um, tried very hard to trace the source of the lotus by going inside the water could not was very much bewildered 
and that time brahma heard the word tapa tapa uh, the word tapa is described as the wealth of the renunciate renunciants and brahma started to perform severe austerities <clears throat> and after performing austerities for 1000 celestial years this all comes in these verses in this chapter after performing austerities for 1000 celestial years um, brahma and what kind of austerities uh, brahma ji performed one is concentrating his mind and one is controlling the pranas and the senses he controlled his senses controlled his life there and concentrated his mind in the purport to this verse, the Prabhupada says that Tapa must be centered around Bhakti. Because the next verse says, um, after performing Tapa for 1000 celestial years, and after um, trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing who he is, Brahma had this desire to populate this universe. It's coming from the Lord which he didn't realize. Um, and he doesn't realize himself. He doesn't realize where he is doesn't realize what he should do. Um, there is no thirst and hunger though. Um, but there is curiosity, inquisitiveness and identity loss. He doesn't know his own identity. Then after performing tapa, Prabhupada says tapa have to be centered around bhakti. Um, Prabhupada does not give much detail. Neither the verse speaks much detail on what the tapa Brahmaji performed. But Bhagavatam does mention so there was some concentration of the mind. And we hear naturally Krishna says, Man mana bhadma bhakto constant fix your mind on me. And he controlled his mind and senses. Um, then uh, the Lord appeared to him. The Lord uh, uh, appeared to him and the Lord showed him Vaikuntha. The Lord showed Vaikuntha being pleased with Brahma's tapa, Brahma's penance. Then Sukadeva Goswami gives up a simple description of Vaikuntha. Um, he says the Vaikuntha is the supreme planet. It is adored by all the self-realized persons, um, loved by devotees. Um, devotees don't um, like this material world. Um, Prabhupada says how advanced we are is based on how much we dislike or how much we have pessimistic view about this place. We also hear, uh, Krishna also says uh, how a self-realized soul sees this place as Dukhalya Mashashwata. It is uh, misery and suffering. We see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, uh, why have you placed me in this ocean of death? Somehow or other, my Lord, I have uh, entered into this ocean of death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me at an, as an atom at your lotus feet. So we see the view of Srila Prabhupada, the view of Lord Krishna of this material world, the view of... Uh, um, um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of this material world. And um, uh, so what do they like? They don't like to be here. And that's why um, Sukadeva Goswami says that this is the supreme planet which is adored by all the self-realized persons. This place, description of Vaikuntha, is free from suffering. There is no suffering. Um, um, the cause of suffering is mentioned as some personal desires, um, independent desires, um, vested interests. This is the cause of suffering. But there everything is centered around Krishna. Um, and um, in this material world, um, although there may be many endeavors and there may be the endeavors may not go in the way we want. There may be apparently suffering. But a devotee sees the hand of Krishna. Okay, this is what Krishna wants. So in that way, he doesn't suffer because he sees Krishna's hand and he knows that uh, um, Krishna is my true well -wisher. So he doesn't really see that. But in spiritual world, because everything is centered around Krishna, um, there is no suffering in Vaikuntha. There is no confusion in Vaikuntha. Um, everything happens by Lord's, whatever Lord wants happens. No, con Nobody is confused. We see uh, Arjuna was confused. He's, Arjuna says, I am confused about my duty. Please tell me uh, instructively what is good for me. And I surrender to you. Then Krishna smiled. But there is no such confusion. And Prabhupada says, uh, um, 
um, it is natural for a conditioned soul to be confused in this material world and that's why there's a need of gurus but then but when you are self-realized um, the realization is within the heart even in this material world and there the lord is there um, so there is it's free from confusion free from suffering uh, free from fear of offenses um, why because it is said the offense for offense to happen there has to be envy and there everything is motivated by love when things are motivated by love it's not an offense like Shri Prabhupada is guiding the disciples and there was no offense why because Shri Prabhupada was a well-wisher but why offense happens is because we don't like somebody and then we meddle there or we speak something which is born out of hatredness towards somebody else so that's why there is no fear of offenses. It is said that a pure devotee cannot commit offense because the envy is not there. Whatever he does is motivated by the desire um, for the benefit of others or and simultaneously as a service to Guru and Krishna. It's like constant. Of course, we are not advanced enough, but the pure devotees, they are, they are doing constantly everything, constantly everything, um, um, my Lord, as a, as a service to Guru and Krishna, they do that. Then there is no influence of modes, there is no time, and there is no maya, uh, illusory energy. Um, there, the Lord is worshipped and the Lord is loved by everyone. That is the, that is the description of Vaikuntha. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Sukhadev Goswami is describing um, what Brahma saw, what was Brahma's realization. Brahma was frustrated. And Brahma performed severe austerities, 1,000 celestial years. He met Narayan. Narayan revealed the Vaikuntha planet. And Brahma's uh, realization of Vaikuntha planet is uh, glorious. And he was very enlivened to see. And he loved Vaikuntha planet. But again, he saw that. But then again, he is living in this material world amidst this material ocean um, furious waves um, but he he got a glimpse um, then he saw um, uh, various people in Vaikuntha he saw that they are glowing uh, sky bluish complexion he saw everybody when the Lord revealed to him the entire Vaikuntha and Brahma is seeing from a third eye perspective and he is seeing everybody is sky bluish complexion everybody eyes were like lotuses and they all were dressed in yellow garments, everybody, all the males, um, everybody was youthful, uh, everybody was very effulgent, uh, everybody have a very pleasing demeanor, like a slight smile and uh, very happy and satisfied content. Um, they all had four hands um, and they all had shining earrings, they all had garlands and they all had a crown. <laughs> So, it sounds like a nice community. <laughs> um, they all have garlands, crown. So, this is what glimpse Brahma saw. He saw, like, everything is full of love. Um, no envy there. Uh, no confusion. Uh, no suffering. Like, we hear Buddha when he came and when he went out for the first time out of the palace, he saw a dead man. He saw an old lady. He saw... Um, um, a deceased person and he's like oh this place is so much suffering everyone is everyone is going through all these things and this is what this place offers in the in the beginning there is suffering at the birth and in the middle throughout there are things that are breaking here and there and then there is old and there is death this is what this place is about um, and he decided to renounce and then he started meditating Buddha um, and here we see uh, Brahma is getting this um personal experience of Vaikuntha. Uh, the site of the Vaikuntha planet with its inhabitants um, and then he saw that there were airplanes and in the airplanes there was Vaikuntha women like this, like um, families uh, and uh, it resembled um, the airplanes resembled the sky filled with Clouds and uh, flashing light. So cloud is like uh, the Prabhus in the Vaikuntha. And uh, the women in Vaikuntha are uh, flashing light means very bright and very beautiful. Um, and 
um, but at the same time um, they love each other but there is no lust there but they both love krishna more than each other but they but they are families but the, just like here na krishna conscious family is like both husband and wife are uh, uh, bent on serving krishna together exactly that's the grihastha life in vaikuntha in vaikuntha there is no um, brahmacharis and there is no sanyasis there are children uh, <laughs> eternally like in goloka vrindavan also cowherd boys younger younger boys younger girls and families and there is krishna and krishna has his own parents it's a community and center down block so this is what brahma saw he saw mother lakshmi she was engaged sometimes in serving the lotus feet of uh, the lord and other times she was singing the lord's glories so either she is massaging and serving or when she is going she is glorifying the lord and imagine he saw the lord and he saw lakshmi and he saw the inhabitants and he saw the air planes he saw the environment and this is uh, the lord gave him the realization we see um, um krishna also showed the vaikuntha and krishna showed um, goloka vrindavan to the cowherd boys also then the lord is described as uh, narayan is described as he was the lord of the devotees he was um, the lord of uh, um, um lakshmi the lord of the universe the lord of sacrifice he is the lord of everything and the lord was being served by uh, sunan sunanda nanda uh, prabala arhana and he saw the lord he saw lakshmi he saw followers and he saw there were people around uh, the lord and they were serving the lord and their names are also given and brahma is seen um, and then he saw the beauty of the lord and he he, he describes sukadev goswami describes what brahma saw he said the lord was very satisfying um he was very favorably disposed towards the servitors like very loving toward the servants um his very sight is intoxicating and attractive um anybody who looks at the lord was intoxic getting intoxicated um uh, and super attractive uh, he had a very nicely smiling face he had reddish eyes yellow garments earrings shining crown four hands and a mark of srivatsa and this is the lord is described so brahma ji saw the lord brahma ji saw lakshmi devi brahma ji saw inhabitants brahma ji saw the personal servants of the lord brahma ji saw the air planes and brahma ji saw the whole environment the mood um, um the happiness the feeling and this is what brahma ji saw then um, the lord was sitting on his throne he saw he was sitting on his throne surrounded by his energies light and surrounding the throne there were many energies and what were those energies um uh, prakriti purusha mahatatva ego uh, the all the material elements the mind they are all energies of the lord and they are all surrounding the lord the lord's throne and you know we hear prabhupada used to say parashta shakti vividaiva shruyate the lord has unlimited energies among them we know the primary energy is haladini shakti and uh, sambit and sandhini potency we know but here we see the lord was sitting on a throne and all this energies were around him the false ego the mahatatva purusha prakriti the five panch bhutas earth water fire air ether the five senses the five sense objects um then the six natural opulences which is like all riches all wealth all fame all beauty or renunciation um um the five the six natural opulences and there were uh, other insignificant energies like ast siddhi like anima lagima um and like smaller than the smallest lighter than the lightest heavier than the heaviest and creating one's own planet and prapti is like you whatever you desire you get it so there were ast siddhi sitting there were natural opulences and all these there are so many energies everything is coming from krishna na so or or narayan and everything was surrounding on the same and the lord is sitting and he is having a loving affection with the associates and all these energies are sitting around him um 
and thus uh, when he saw the lord and everything brahma was overwhelmed with ecstasy and he was filled with joy and tears uh, flowed from his eyes in great ecstasy and he bowed down before the lord and brahma ji is like uh, bowing down before the lord then the lord became very pleased and the lord accepted brahma as a, as worthy as uh, of following his command and and then the lord gave him the command and he says and he was very pleased and the command for creating the universe um, and then um, brahma shook hand with brahma, uh, the lord shook hand with brahma and then the lord started to speak a very beautiful description very nice and sukadev goswami is you know uh, parikshit maharaj asked so many questions sukadev goswami is answering but first he is creating the scene of how brahma ji happened to meet the lord uh, and that so this was the background of the scene so then the lord spoke the lord said uh, uh, oh brahma i am very much satisfied with your uh, long tapa uh, in order to carry out the creation uh, i am hardly satisfied with the pseudo mystics The Lord says, "Those who no, pseudo pseudo mystics, uh, I am hardly satisfied with them. But because of your sincere, long time tapa, I am very pleased with you. I am very satisfied. Oh, Brahma Ji, please ask for a benediction from me. Uh, but you may know that the ultimate benediction of all penances is to see me. So this is very nice. So the Lord told Brahma, you know, ask for any benediction. I am pleased with you." and then he says but you should know the purpose of all the benediction is to see me means you have attained the ultimate benediction is that you have got my darshan you are seeing me um, it is not easy to see krishna na or to see narayan um, that is the ultimate benediction but then he said you have got the ultimate but now you ask any other benediction this darshan of my abode is the highest perfection this has been possible because of your severe penance know that it was i who spoke tapa tapa when you were perplexed in your duty and then the lord is telling you know who spoke tapa tapa to you when nobody is there it was i who spoke tapa tapa and this is very nice chaitanya mahaprabhu also revealed during his mahaprakash leela um, he he told i was the person who came as a boatman with a boat when um, when the soldiers were trying to um, abduct your family and mistreat them and you were running for shelter i was the one then he told haridas chakur i was the one who took, who took all the pains um, when you were beaten by the whips um, of uh, um, the servants of kazi uh, i took and he showed and all the marks on his back i was the one um, um, who told uh, uh, advaita not to fast and the meaning of the bhagavad gita was that you are not able to understand and to understand what you are fasting i will reveal to you at later point of time and this is what it means advaita so in this way we see and here we see the lord is saying i was the one who spoke tapa tapa and because of your severe uh, penance i am very much pleased with you and that's why you are able to see me and this abode <clears throat> the heaven in the highest perfection then the lord says penance is my heart and soul and therefore penance and i are non different uh, i create and maintain and destroy this material universe only by penance and my power arises from intense penance the lord is lord is telling uh, whoever does austerities whoever does penance is my heart and soul and i am very pleased with those who perform uh, penance and i create maintain and destroy this material universe only by penance the lord also he says he also does penance um so what is penance um, like prabhupa says like it is described here um one 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 definition of penance given by lord krishna is austerity of mind austerity of uh, uh, speech austerity of body like bowing down visiting visiting the holy places uh, remembering krishna uh, Uh, reading the vedic scriptures this is penance for us um chanting the holy name it's the best of all the penance among sacrifice i am japa 
that is the highest penance. So in this way, those who practice and Prabhupada says, these are not the penances performed by yogis going and sitting on one leg in a fire. These are not. Otherwise, those things can never have given Brahma the darshan of uh, the Lord. But the Lord was revealed. Like the penance of Dhruva Maharaj was Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This was the penance. Along with that, uh, simplified is eating. Uh, Krishna says uh, eating, sleeping um, um, and recreation in, uh, in moderate amount. Uh, uh, so these were the various penances. Okay, then Brahmaji asked a few questions. Um, um, and this chapter is actually one of the most important chapters of Bhagavatam because this chapter uh, comes the Chatushloki Bhagavatam uh, and we will discuss about the four seed verses of Bhagavatam the entire Bhagavatam arose from there are just like uh, um, Narayan spoke these four verses to Brahma that we will come uh, first Brahmaji asked certain questions and to respond to those questions then Narayan spoke four verses and that was that was expanded further by Brahma to Narada and Narada expanded further to Vyasa and Vyasa expanded further and that's how we have this Bhagavatam and it is said that Bhagavatam is like you know like a cotton you spread it it becomes fluffy you spread a little more becomes more fluffy and likewise it is never ending and always increasing like it is mentioned, eventually Shri Prabhupada will also enter the pages of Bhagavatam. And Vyasadeva is still living. Na? So Vyasadeva will write about Shri Prabhupada, uh, pure devotion and how the whole uh, the whole world of Malachas and Yavanas uh, took up to pure Krishna Bhakti and pure devotional service in the age of Kali. So that will also come in the page of Srimad Bhagavatam. But the original uh, seed verses come just like we have Chatur Shloki Bhagavad Gita in 10 chapter, verse number 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, likewise, uh, in this 9 chapter, um, 33, 34, 35, 36, 4 verses are uh, um, the Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam. So, Brahmaji asks certain questions. Brahmaji is asked uh, after he says, now ask for any benediction. Uh, you should know the highest benediction is to see me. Um, this is the perfection of life. And I'm, and you are able to do this because of your severe penance. And I and penance are non-different. Um, and I personally create, maintain and annihilate everything through penance. And obviously Lord sits in Yoga Maya. And Lord uh, then breathes out and the universe comes. And then he breathes in and then he is maintaining. Um, so this is referred to as Lord's penance also. Um, and we see uh, penance has a lot of powers. Even if uh, um, penance uh, is not centered around bhakti, the penance still have powers. Like we see the penance performed by even Hirnakashipu and Ravana attracted so many powers. We see the penance of Gandhari um, of being a Pratibrata and did not see anything and she became very powerful. We see Anasuya and we see other chaste women also uh, perform penance throughout their life for the pleasure of their husband. And then even the sun god was bound by the curse of uh, uh, Anasuya and other uh, chaste women. So penance itself has a lot of power and the penance can be used even by demoniac people uh, for and the Lord give them power because Krishna says that I am not different from penance. But Prabhupada clarifies, now those penance, um, only devotional penance can give us Krishna. Other penance can give us many mystical powers. Many yogis who perform, that's, that's the path of Ashtanga Yoga. They go to the Himalayas, they perform penance and what do they get? Mm. They can levitate, walk on the water, they get many powers also. So penance is a lot of power. And for us penance is chanting 16 rounds in Brahma Murta. And Prabhupada says, all the mystic siddhis and asta siddhis and everything is def is by default awarded to a devotee just by his and you know, Uddhav Gita Uddhava asks how to how to get these siddhis and Krishna describes various ways by which each siddhi can be attained and the essence of all the ways is bhakti only and Prabhupada says by bhakti you get all the siddhis all the powers everything you get an example is Hanuman asta siddhi ke data 
he has uh, um, Navanidhis and Ashtasiddhis, everything. How? Just by his devotion to Ram. And Prabhupada, and Prabhupada also showed some mystic powers, but he did not um, emphasize them. He only emphasized pure bhakti. So penance has this shakti that can give us anything. Um, and self-gratification um, um, brings us down and down and down. And tapa, austerity, serving the Lord, makes us more and uplift us more and more and makes us more and more powerful. We'll speak for 10 more minutes. I don't think we'll be able to finish this chapter, but okay, now the four questions by Brahma asked to uh, Narayan. He says, please tell me about your material and spiritual form. Question number one. Uh, about your spiritual form, about your material form. And what is the material form of the Lord? It is the universe. The universe is a universal form. Um, it is made up of earth, water, fire, air, ether. This is a material form. And then please tell me about your material and spiritual form. Then, um, then the second question, how are your various spiritual and material energies work? So now the first question, please tell me about your material and spiritual form. Is Chattu Shloki Bhagavatam first verse is the answer to that. Then the second and the third, the answer is the second and third verse. And the fourth question, the answer is the fourth. So based on these four questions, they are answered in four verses. And it is Brahmaji is asking about the Lord and Lord is telling about himself. And that's Bhagavatam. What is Bhagavatam? Bhagavatam is about Bhagavan. That's why it is said, what is Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita is word spoken by Bhagavan. And Bhagavatam is about Bhagavan. And why is Bhagavan speaking about himself? Because um, Brahmaji is asking Bhagavan question about Bhagavan. And Bhagavan is speaking about himself. And that is Bhagavatam. Um, please tell me about your material and spiritual form. How are your various spiritual and material energies working? So there are many, we, we saw energy, right? Haladini Shakti, they are all spiritual energy. But then we also hear uh, various material energy of uh, Narayan. We discuss uh, mind, ego, Mahatattva. So how do all this material energy and how do all the spiritual energy, how they are working? How are all these energies working? Um, then this is the second question. Then, what are your activities in relation to the material and spiritual energies? And how do you interact with these energies? Um, or this is similar to um, this similar to your pastimes, your leelas. Um, how do you interact with the, all the spiritual energy or the material energy? Or which basically includes with your devotees, with the material world, your relationship with the material world, your relationship with devotees. Everything comes in this. Uh, what are your activities in relation to material and spiritual energies? Because everything energy, na? even uh, Shrimati Radharani is Haladini Shakti. Um, uh, energy of uh, the pleasure potency, pleasure energy of Lord Krishna. And then uh, Balaramji's um, existential potency of Lord Krishna. And all the incarnations are also energy of Krishna. So, but there's spiritual energy of Krishna. And then there's material energy of Krishna. And how do you interact? Um, this is very deep questions and very deep answers to it, actually. But then uh, there is commentary on Chattush Loki Bhagavatam by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, by Jiva Goswami, by Krishna's Kavira. Ch Chaitanya Charitamrita describes, gives a commentary also uh, by Shira Prabhupada. Um, uh, by Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written a book only on these four verses, explaining these four verses. So we can... Imagine how much is being written by our Goswami. But we will naturally not go in all the details, um, but a simple understanding. And the last question is, please bestow your mercy for my execution of your instruction without pride and bondage. And the last question is, he is asking for mercy. First, we are asking about the Lord. Um, um, what are your material forms, your spiritual forms? Um, what are your various energies um, and how do you interact with them? Your material and spiritual energy. How are how do they work and how um, what are your relationship or how you act in relationship to these energies? And then your mercy on my execution of your instruction without pride and bondage. So the you know whatever 
the instruction may come from Guru and Krishna. Um, and for Brahmaji, the instruction came from uh, Lord Nara, you populate. But then there is a chance that when we follow the instruction given by Guru and Krishna, we have become bound and we have become proud. Because with instruction comes empowerment. Um, when Guru and Krishna says to us to do something, and we'll be able to do it. But then if we think I did it and see how uh, how nicely I did it or how successful I was or, or what impact it created or whatever, then the pride will come when we take ownership of it. And that will also cause bondage. So, um, Brahmaji, Brahmaji has been given a huge instructions. You be the, the leader of this universe and millions and millions will come and go and you will be the one who create everybody and the father of everybody, the forefather of everybody and giving benediction to everybody. It's a huge service Brahmaji has got. So Brahmaji says, give me your mercy so I can do the service that you have told me without bondage and without bondage and pride. And that's why some of the Brahmas actually, not our Brahma is a pure devotee. He is not attached to this world. Some of the Brahmas becomes attached uh, and then they glide down to lower forms and come down. But the, our Brahma is a pure devotee. So after the tenure of Brahma, he will go back to Vaikuntha Lokas. He came as Haridas Thakur, um, um, etc. And he was personally um, gave the mercy of Krishna also to Brahma Vimohan Nila. So he is always, uh, he is a pure devotee, our Brahma. So he says, give me the benediction so I don't become bound and proud. Uh, we see Maharaj Priyavrat, he was performing austerities. Uh, then he was asked by Brahma and Narada to become the king. Uh, but Maharaj Priyavrata doesn't want to engage in material activities. Uh, but because he was asked by Brahma and Narada, he became the king. And then he became attached. Because uh, with very passionate work of maintaining and churning the mother earth to give all the produce, taking care of citizens, taking care of family, dealing with wealth and position and became so engrossed and so busy that he became like totally absorbed in what to do and what are the problems in solving and he became so engaged in being the king that uh, uh, he could not focus on the Lord and he became attached. So it's, it, it's not like he has morning sadhana and he is doing everything thinking my Lord I'm doing this for your pleasure. Everything is lost and he became engaged in external activities without Krishna centered. But later on, um, um, by the mercy, because he did, he did, uh, um, by following the instruction of uh, Brahmaji and Narad Muni, the Lord gave him realization within his heart and he felt like, oh, I got so attached and I lost what I had. And he got a, a realization of the nature of this word. He handed it over to somebody and he started um, gradually renouncing and uh, focus his mind on remembering Krishna. He went back home, back to Godhead also. So it's very easy when we are dealing with this word and when we are not uh, very strong spiritually. It is very busy. It is very easy to um, get attached. And these were the four questions. And then we will see more answer. And Chatushloki Bhagavatam I didn't plan on discussing today. We'll spend some more time on that next week. And if there any discussion, we can take now. Any questions? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. One quick question, if you don't mind. Ahead. You have a question, Prabhuji? Yes, Prabhuji. Then let me know, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Just want to know, like... Uh, as we know, like we, uh, as you're saying, like Brahmaji is a pure devotee of the Lord, right? But in, in our material world, there is no worship of Brahmaji because of some, some of his activities. Nobody worship him. There is no temple except one or two temples, you know, in the, um, so because he got curse from, you know, Lord Shiva and um, his Satrupa. So, mm -hmm. I mean, then because he was fallen in terms of, you know, couple of times we have seen, you know, in our past times. So how you are saying, like, Prabhuji, he's a pure devotee. I'm a little confused. Prabhu, accidental things may happen. Accidental things. Accidental falls may happen. But then Brahma quickly rectified him and then 
um, it's not that like it is said, it's not that like a pure devotee cannot make a mistake. But if something happens, it's it's accidental things may happen. So when we say pure devotee means um, there can be glitches and that's not considered like, okay, now he is a conditioned soul like us. <laughs> But Prabhuji, um, that many times, so that my accident we can consider many times, it can also be possible with a pure devotee because uh, I mean, he's constantly with Krishna. In a way, he's constantly remembering Krishna. And sometimes, and even Brahmaji says, even Lord Shiva says, we are also not free from the illusory energy of the Lord. So sometimes, illusory energy of the Lord may capture even Brahma and Shiva. Prabhupada also says, even Brahma and Shiva are not free. Because the initial energy of the Lord is so powerful. Um, but then um, we we don't say that like so it's it's safe to say that they are um, they are pure devotees. There may be um, some glitches but we we don't consider them out of the zone of pure devotion. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I mean, that's the best way I can explain. Thank you, Fuji. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bro. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dhanvat Pranam. Nandari Sundari Matami, Dhanvat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you for a wonderful class. I have two questions, Prabhuji. Hmm. I yes, will Mata. start with one. <laughs> Sorry. So, Prabhuji, when you say that in Vaikuntha Loka, the energies are standing besides uh, the Lord, so are they in their personified form that they are standing there? Are they in the in the Vaikuntha Loka? Like um, Lagima, Mahima? Like how do I understand that? Hmm. Yeah, my understanding is they are all servants of the Lord. And my understanding is also that everything in spiritual world is personal. Okay. Um, Ganga is also a person. Himalayan is also a person. The ocean who was, uh, who Lord Ram burnt because of not giving way to Lanka was also a person. And even we hear in 10th Canto Bhagavatam, the Veda, the Shrutis are praying to Krishna. The Vedas are praying to Krishna. So they're all personalities. So it's uh -huh. safe to assume that they are personalities, Mataji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. And the second question was about the austerities and penance that we were talking about. Now, I had heard, please forgive Prabhuji, in the um, his case, Chaitanya Charan Prabhuji's class, maybe few years ago, three, four years ago, he was, just, he was talking about the difference between austerity and penance because somebody had asked that question. So he was saying anything that we are voluntarily taking up upon ourselves to improve our spiritual or material condition is an austerity. But if we have done a mistake, something like it happens in uh, Christianity, if any uh, like something, the faults that you have done, just come price chit, Hindi mein hum price chit kehte hai, right? So mm. if you are doing the price chit for something that you have done wrong, that is penance. But here, when we are discussing, I was, I mean, um, uh, my understanding became after what you were telling me, telling us is that austerity and penance can be interchanged if it is for material and spiritual advancement. The, the word can be interchanged. Hmm. Is, that, is that okay understanding? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, Krishna uses the word um, Bhagavad Gita. He uses the word um, um, uh, Tapa. Yes. And Prabhupada described somewhere as uh, penance and somewhere Prabhupada describes Tapa as austerities. And again, three kind of austerity of body, austerity of mind, austerity of. Um, um, so, in 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 Bhagavad Gita, especially, although technically, Chaitanya Chaitan Prabhu is always right, and there is difference when we speak in general. But in in our in our understanding for the for for our today's discussion, it's safe to say um, um, the devotional um, activities. Um, brings a lot of power like morning sadhana following the regulatory principles being loyal to our spiritual master um, uh, brings a lot of power and I understood Prabhuji yeah thank you so much so now what my understanding now has become is 
it's okay whatever we are doing can be considered both as austerity and penance but if somebody is really atoning for their sins that cannot be called austerity that is penance only he is doing prashtata only yeah, yeah, because he's ashamed of what it is yes that's oh, okay penance. great yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much prabhu ji very grateful thank you mata ji hari krishna okay anything else hari krishna prabhu ji dhanyavad pranam prabhu ji uh prabhu ji uh, one small question so in a uh, spiritual world there is no time right so there is no yes. uh, growing age kind of thing right so whoever is there in one age stays forever eternally for the same age right correct no destruction right so then in that case like as you mentioned today that there are families and there are children also so whoever is in children form they uh, remain as a forever as a children form only forever for so example then, when you were small you used to say you go out and play badminton so throughout the life you go and play with your friends throughout the life means for eternity krishna always goes herd the cows play with cow herd boys play with the gopis and um he the elderly gopas gopis they wait for krishna that that lila goes on eternally so then it means that uh, whatever form they have in the same form they continue to serve krishna right not in any other uh, relation means yeah the form they have for eternity they continue and that relationship is revealed by sadhana to us gradually then the like i was just trying to understand and there is nothing like specific to that family right like if the children are not going to grow then that family remains as it is in that state only yeah there is no conception in those families of my child height is small or but they are not growing up what about their future how will they get married those i mean uh, they are these are eternal situations these past times are called uh, nitya leela it means eternal past times Yes, it means just uh, with my limited thinking uh, capacity or whatever. Like we don't know the truth about more about uh, spiritual world, so I'm little bit not able to uh, understand that. Then how the mother will be loving their children? Like if they are only attached to Krishna, right over there, they should not be attached to their children, right? So no, not like that. and like it is said uh, when we love krishna we love all living entities na so for example there may be some devotees you love and you love krishna and then you love devotees because they are krishna's devotees like there is a vaishnav sangha and there is like when pure devotees meet how much love they have all these mm-hmm. spiritual masters how much love and affection they have for each other like mm-hmm. correct right mm-hmm. no examples yeah. it's clear Yeah. so that love is it's and it's a real pure love um, but the love is centered around loving krishna mm-hmm. so that then it means that those parents also may be experiencing vatsalya bhav towards uh, those children and then another relationship with um, another rasa they must be experiencing for krishna right different both vatsalya a parent say a father like they experience vasalya with their own children and vasalya for the krishna but vasalya for krishna is stronger than vasalya for their own children also mm. and they are feeling vasalya mm. for their own children because of vasalya for krishna so krishna is the saint mm. and i was just trying to compare with the material world so we are more attached to children like sometimes we think uh, about children for more time like instead of that we should have focused on krishna but that comes because of maybe the modes of material nature or whatever our conditioning so i was trying to compare those two uh, stages yeah. thank you thank you prabhu ji i got it hari krishna